In Lab 7, Chemical Detective, you learned about an overarching law in science called the Law of Conservation of Matter. That law has two practical applications. First, it states that the number and type of atoms on the reactant side of a chemical equation must be equal to the number and type of atoms on the product side of a chemical equation. The second application is that the total number of grams on the reactant side must be equal to the total number of grams of product produced. It is also true that the total amount of energy in a chemical reaction must be the same in the reactants as in the products. That energy may change forms, however. Not only is there energy contained in the chemical bonds, but there is also energy sometimes present in the form of a temperature change, as you felt with the steel wool when it was mixed with copper sulfate, or if light is produced, such as the flame in a combustion type reaction. And finally, there may be sound produced as in a particularly exuberant explosion or chemical reaction. Read and highlight the introductory paragraphs paying particular attention to the terms endothermic and exothermic, as well as the definition of delta T, which you see written as a triangle before the capital letter T in the last sentence. Now read and complete the prediction at the bottom of the first sheet. This lab follows the course of two different chemical reactions. Your job is to try to figure out if thermal or heat energy is taken in during the course of the reaction by the reactants or is given off as one of the products as the reaction progresses. You will analyze the graph made by your lab quest to make this determination. In reaction one, 30 mLs of citric acid is added to a styrofoam cup. The temperature probe is placed into the liquid, and once a stable temperature is reached, recording begins. We let this record for about five seconds until 10 grams of baking soda is added to the acid. I'll gently stir with the temperature probe. Look for the four signs that a chemical reaction is taking place that you learned in the last lab. Recording continues until a plateau has formed or five minutes has passed. And I'm going to let this go just a couple more seconds until I'm sure that my temperature is done changing. At that point, I'm going to stop recording. You will use this graph and data table to record the initial and final temperatures into the data table in your lab book, and you will use the shape of this graph to sketch into the graph provided on sheet six. Now we'll do reaction two. In reaction two, 30 mLs of hydrochloric acid is added to the cup. The temperature probe is placed in the cup, and once the temperature equilibrates and stops changing, we'll begin recording. Now 
Next, several nuggets of magnesium metal are added to the acid. Again, look for the four clues from the last lab that indicate a chemical reaction is taking place. It still looks like this is changing slightly, so I'm going to keep recording. And there we have a plateau. You will record the initial and final temperatures from the table on this page into your data table on sheet 5. And then sketch the shape of this graph also onto the graph space on sheet 6. You are now ready to finish the lab beginning with the data analysis section halfway down on sheet 5. Remember to use complete sentences.